I'm Martin Tyler, and you're listening to Harry Simeon. Hey everybody, welcome back to the Chronicles of Aguna, the Arsenal podcast, part of the 90 Min Football Network for our second live stream of the day. It's not even 1pm yet and we've already uh, dropped a video earlier on today uh, and an episode of the podcast, of course, earlier today discussing the announcement of Gabriel Jesus and I'm back again to talk about another link. This time to Lazio midfielder Sergei Milinkovic Savage. I'm trying really, really hard not to get sucked into this. I'm trying really, really hard to keep my call cool because Sergei Milinkovic Savage is a player that I've had eyes on for a long, long time. I'm a big Serie A fan, as you guys know, and I've watched a lot of him over the years. And, you know, it's, it's always felt like it's a matter of uh, when rather than if he's going to move on to a bigger side, to a, a more competitive side. He's a top, top player and he ticks so many boxes uh, that I would be buzzing if Arsenal could get this deal done. I'll talk to you a little bit about where the link comes from, what it says, and then we'll talk about how realistic I think this is, how true I think it is, as well as giving you guys a bit of a download on Sergei Milinkovic Savic, uh, and we can talk about him at length. Um, a few hellos, because there's loads of you in the live chat. There was over 100 of you waiting before the link even went live, which is amazing. Uh, so thank you so, so much. Big hello to Airy Hart, to Mark Denny, um, to Gunner Deja Vu. Uh, big hello to Felix, to Steve, to Martin, to Birdie, to Nisha, to Daniel, uh, to Christoph, uh, to Yahuzaim, to Leonardo, to Patrick, Harvey, uh, Ollie's there as well. Loads of you in the chat box. So good uh, to see you all here. My oh God, we've got more than 200 of you watching. We've only been streaming for a minute. Welcome. Welcome to the Chronicles of Aguna Live. OK, so what are we talking about here? Sergei Milinkovic Savic. What is the story? Well, according to Il Messaggero in Italy, and this story has since been picked up by a number of English outlets, it looks as though Arsenal have made an offer to Lazio over the player, thought to be worth 55 million euros, which translates to around about 47 million pounds. Lazio have set an asking price of about 60 million, uh, but there is a feeling in Italy that if anybody can get relatively close to that, Lazio could still be quite open to allowing the player to leave. Now, we know that Lazio's financial situation is not great. We also know that Lazio are one of the clubs interested potentially in Lucas Torreira. Now, of course, Arsenal are looking to offload the player this summer. They've not had the type of offer that they deem suitable. I think Lucas Torreira spoke the other day uh, about it going to cost 12 to 15 million euros. I can't remember exactly what he said, but he named the price, didn't he, in almost a, a come and get me plea to those clubs that have been speaking to his representatives and have shown some interest in the Uruguayan. Arsenal could potentially use him as a bit of a make weight in this deal for a couple of reasons. Number one, Lazio do have an interest in Lucas Torreira. Um, and of course, if that could help reduce the outlay on the player, uh, on Sergei Milinkovic Savic, that would be helpful from Arsenal's perspective. But also add to that the fact that they play both in the centre of midfield. That means that Lazio may see Lucas Torreira as something of a replacement. Now, they're not exactly the same in terms of the way they play the game, and they're certainly not the same in terms of their physical stature. But he's a centre midfielder, and a centre midfielder for a centre midfielder kind of seems fair. Now, let me just be very, very clear and upfront about this from the very beginning of this episode. This is what Il Messaguero report. This is what a number of the English outlets have picked up off the back of this initial story uh, from Il Messaguero. But what I want to say is we often, so often, in fact, get sucked into reports from Italy that actually don't often have a lot of credibility to them. Now, I don't know that this is the case with this story, so I wouldn't want to say one way or the other, you know, whether I think this is true or not. But I am wary. I am cautious about getting my hopes up and and getting carried away with the idea of Sergei milinkovic Savage based on a report from an outlet that I would have described in the past as questionable. So here we are talking about it as we should, discussing it as we should. But I just want to get that message out nice and early in the episode. Approach this one with caution for the time being. If we hear this down the line from 
one of the more reliable sources from a, a David Ornstein, a Fabrizio Romano, just to name a couple of examples. Then all of a sudden, I think you can start to pay a little bit more attention to this. Arsenal, according to this report, though, are still a little bit of a way off of what Lazio are looking for for the player. So why is it that I'm so big on Sergei Milinkovic-Savage? What do I think he would bring to Arsenal Football Club that we don't have? Well, I think Sergei Milinkovic-Savage and the reason that so many clubs are rumoured to have an interest in him and the reason that he's been talked about in such high regard for a number of years now brings you that perfect balance between a real physical... Um, powerhouse midfielder who has a presence that makes him dominating um, and makes him intimidating to play against, but also has the technical ability of a true technician. You know, he's got both of those sides to his game. And that's what really, really excites me about Sergei Milinkovic-Savage. If we go over to, I'll tell you what, I'll take you guys uh, over to transfermarkt. Uh, .co.uk. We'll have a little bit of a look on sofa score as well. We'll, we'll break down Sergei Milinkovic Savic a little bit. We're talking about a 27 year old uh, midfielder who was born in Spain but is a Serbian international. That's his heritage. I'm sure the name probably gives it away as well. He's 27 years old, as I say, height 191 centimeters. So I think he's about six foot three if my calculations are. All right, which means, as I say, he's dominating, he's physical, and he brings a presence to the team in the middle of the park. Now, if we roll further down, of course, he plays in the centre of midfield, uh, but has been known to play in a slightly more advanced midfield position as well, which suggests to me that he'd be a really, really good fit for that uh, that extra eight role. We're talking about Odegaard and potentially one more being the eight. Granit Xhaka has played there at times. Obviously, Xhaka is left footed and he gives you a little bit more... Uh, balance in that sense in terms of the team as an as a bigger picture. But I think that Sergei Milinkovic Savic, who Lazio will probably be quite open to selling based on the fact that his contract expires in a couple of years' time. So if they don't do it this summer and they do it next summer where he's only got a year left on his contract, that would significantly, you feel, impact his value. So I think that there's a, a distinct possibility that Lazio will let him go this summer. As I say, plays in those two different types uh, of uh, midfield role. And if you look at his career so far, um, obviously uh, started out playing uh, in Serbia, uh, a bit of time in Austria as well. Um, but then, of course, joined Genk in August 2015 uh, from uh, Vojvodina in a deal worth £900,000. He joined Lazio uh, from Genk for £10.8 million. And if you look at transfer marks, uh, valuation of him at the time. You only need to look at this now. When he was at Genk, his valuation was rather low. Uh, it started to increase, started to increase. But when he got to Lazio, it really sort of uh, jumped up, didn't it? And at one time, he was being reported as having a market value at the age of 23 because of that potential, because of the room to grow of £81 million. Pounds. Now, that is a hell of a lot of money. And obviously, things have flatlined a little bit uh, since then. You know, has he necessarily gone on to uh, achieve the heights that maybe some people had earmarked for him. I don't think so, but I think that's largely because he's remained at Lazio. And I mean that with all the respect in the world, it's just not an environment in which it's very easy right now to to flourish. You know, they've, there's been a lot of changes. Simone Inzaghi got a lot out of Sergei Milinkovic-Savic before leaving the club, of course, to join Inter. And Maurizio Sarri's come in there now and I'm sure would love to keep hold of the player, but I think also recognises that Lazio are very much in a position where they're going to have to cut back on costs and letting a player like Milinkovic Savage go for a, a fee of around about 60 million, which is what we're being told they're asking for, could really help them out as a football club. And I think, based on some reports I've read this morning, Sari is, I mean, I don't know if he's happy with it, but he kind of has to just accept it, right? He has to move on if he wants to keep his job. Those are the, the circumstances under which he's going to be working. Now, I take you guys to his stats um, since joining Lazio. I think they make really, really impressive reading. I, I really, really do. I mean, look at this. I'll just blow it up so you can see it a little bit clearer. You're talking about a player who's played 294 times for the Serie A club. 58 goals. OK, and 51 assists. That is 109 direct goal contributions in just under 300 appearances. Now, for a central midfielder who spends a lot of his time playing in that slightly deeper role, that's pretty impressive, I would say. 61 yellow cards to his name. He's been sent off. 
uh, on a few occasions as well. But overall, I think for me, um, you know, th that makes really, really positive reading. A lot of the goals that Sergei Milinkovic Savic scores are, you know, bangers. You know, some of the goals that you'd have seen from him will, will really impress you. But also what he gives to teams is a real aerial prowess and a real aerial threat. And I think that's something that I would welcome with Sergei Milinkovic Savic if he were to come in. I think over the last, what, 12 months or so since the, the set piece coach changed, we saw Arsenal dramatically improve. Um, in that department, right? We saw Arsenal improve by a hell of a lot in that particular area. We saw Arsenal scoring far more goals from set pieces. We also saw Arsenal tighten it up defensively. I think the, the first goal we conceded from a set piece in the Premier League all season was, or from a corner, was away at Newcastle, right at the back end of the season. So it just goes to show that, you know, there's been significant improvement there. And if you could add someone to... Uh, to that that only enhances that, then then why not? Um, let me take you guys uh, over, for those of you watching, to another site, uh, SofaScore, which I, I quite like uh, for stats and analysis around players. And I'll share with you guys uh, their sort of breakdown of uh, Sergei Milinkovic Savage. Let me just, uh, again, blow that up for those of you uh, watching us at the moment. Um, if you look at his heat map, he tends to drift um, sort of wide, quite a bit, doesn't he, if you look at that. But that can be down to the system in which he's operating as well. But it just, when you look at that, you get the impression that he plays mainly in the centre, but drifts from one side uh, to the other and, and gives us, uh, would give us a lot of um, a lot of movement, despite being such a big guy. Um, they talk about his strengths being his ability to high press. Again, ticks a massive box for Arsenal. Aerial jewels is obviously something that I've just spoken about. And uh, direct free kicks. Again, do we really have a top-tier free kick taker at Arsenal? Cedric's been on him at times lately, so I'd argue no. Um, so yeah, this is a this is a real, a real, um, a real positive. I think when you look at what his average Sofa Score rating was, that's performance rating. It's out of ten um, during the course of last season in the Serie A. It was seven point two eight, which I think. What I would say is 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 very good. You know, you, you talk about a player in a Lazio team that didn't really perform all that well last season, for the most part, showed flashes, showed glimpses, but struggled really, if we're being honest. That's a really, really impressive return, I would say. And of course, there is an element of opinion to these ratings. And of course, some of it is based on stats, some of it is based on fact, but a lot of it as well is based on the eye test and based on the person compiling the rating. So you've got to take them sometimes with a bit of a pinch of salt. It is a game of opinions after all, but I think that makes really, really encouraging reading. Now, as I've said, I think that Lazio would be open to doing this deal for less than the £60 million that they're said to be asking for. But again, we come to this really difficult point if indeed Arsenal have formally made an offer, where we kind of know what the, the ballpark figure is, we know what we want to pay, and we seem to just dilly-dally a little bit too long at certain points with these kind of things and can often uh, see ourselves, you know, getting pipped by another club. You know, we saw it with Rafinha, right? We, we were never going to sign Rafinha at the end of the day. The guy clearly has his heart set on Barcelona. But what you saw was Leeds make it very, very clear what their price was. Arsenal make an offer that was substantially lower than what they were asking for. And in that time where Arsenal were kind of discussing or thinking about potentially going in with another bid and another offer, we saw another club come in, make an offer far closer to what Leeds United were asking for and essentially push us out of the picture. And so every time I hear these types of reports that Arsenal are interested in this player, they've verbally offered X amount, but it's still not the X amount that the club are looking for. It, it does irritate me and it does get on my nerves a little bit. We don't know how much of it is true at this stage. And as I've said to you guys throughout the duration of this podcast, we've got to be really careful not to get our hopes up. In fact, I've spoken in the last few days about the need to not get too attached to targets before they've pulled an Arsenal shirt over their heads. Yet, I'm I'm fangirling uh, Sergei Milinkovic Savic. I'm not going to lie because he's a player that I really really like, and it would be another like Jesus statement signing for me. This is not a kid that we're looking to to bring in to develop and hopefully uh, will flourish in the the not too distant future. This is a ready made competitor, 
a ready-made footballer at 27 years old, who I think, despite playing in Serie A, which is a very different league stylistically, is very, well, very well equipped to walk into the Premier League and give us something. So, yeah, um, you know, really, really uh, positive about this link. But again, it is just a link. And I'm hoping that we get some more uh, concrete uh, evidence that Arsenal are very much in the race for Sergei milinkovic savic but a player with whom, um, you know, I've or a player whom I've spoken about a lot in the past and a player I've watched a lot uh, in the past who I would welcome with open arms uh, to Arsenal Football Club. Let me know you guys' thoughts in the chat box. There's not an awful lot to go on at the moment. It is a report, as I say, that's coming out initially from Italy, but has been picked up by a number of the British uh, outlets as well. And we'll, I'm sure, keep a, a really close eye on how this develops, if it develops at all in the coming days, weeks. But yeah, let me know what you guys uh, think about him. Uh, Daniel Roberts says, uh, how is his injury record? Well, let's go over uh, to the site that we were just on and uh, and double check that actually because it's a really good point. I don't remember Sergei Milinkovic Savic being one of those players that you'd associate with being injury riddled necessarily. Um, yeah, yeah, look, there's been a few. If you go back to the 2021 season, I think he was out once, twice, three times, four times. Um, but they were for short periods of time. The nasal bone fracture that he suffered uh, in May was something that kind of dragged on for a little bit longer than, than maybe was initially thought. Obviously, he missed out seven days because of coronavirus, which can't be helped. Uh, and prior to that, there was a knock that, again, just kept him out for a couple of games. So there have been some injuries along the way with Sergei milinkovic savic and some absences, but they've not been, you know, long, I would say, worrying things that you look at and go, well, this is a, a big problem. I mean, even if you go back beyond that, groin injury, missed 15 days uh, during the preseason. That's about right, 15 days for a groin problem. A couple of ankle injuries along the way as well. Um, knee inflammation, missed a game. Um, you know, muscular problems, a game, hamstring, a few games there. So I, I don't look at his injury record and think this is a, a massive, massive red flag for me, if I'm being honest. So let's see, um, you know, let's see how this develops. And I'm sure if, as I always say, if we get further down the line with a target, you know, when we do Premier League targets, it's quite easy to compile information on them. It's quite easy to do the eye test on them because we watch that football pretty much every week. I watch a lot of Serie A, but I would still... Uh, reach out to one of my uh, Simply Serie A colleagues. I try to get uh, Vittorio Campanile on, a very good friend of mine, big Lazio man as well, uh, to come on and give us a little bit of a download if indeed this moves forward. So fingers crossed. Um, yeah, fingers crossed that we can we can get this over the line. OK, let's get some of your uh, thoughts in the chat box. Very interesting comment here from Vladimir Soskic, who says... Um, He's a countryman of uh, Sergei milinkovic savic He says, if he wants to play, he's one of the best midfield players in Europe. But the problem is that he has games where he's just not interested in playing. Now, I think that's a, a criticism that's been levelled at milinkovic savic quite a bit, particularly in the last couple of seasons. And what I would say to that is perhaps he's suffering from a bit of demotivation. You know, he's at a club that simply cannot match his level at the moment. He's at a club where there's been a lot of transition, a lot of change, not an awful lot of, um, you know, not an awful lot of, of ambition shown, um, not an awful lot of investment into the team. And so perhaps that plays a part. Um, so we'll have to see. Uh, Hayek says, uh, doesn't his heat map totally overlap that of Thomas Partey's? Yeah, but if they're playing on different sides, it shouldn't be a problem, right? So if you play him on the other side, then you'll be mirroring that heat map only to the other side, I guess, um, is the way I would look at it. Um, what else have we got? Uh, da -da -da -da. Uh, Ian Mighty says, do you think this is a good link? Meaning, is it like the Aaron Hickey one? Again, it's way too early to say, to be honest with you, but, you know, I, I would certainly hold fire on getting carried away until one of the big boys, as I put it, uh, gets gets something on this and, and puts us straight one way or the other. Uh, the Aaron Hickey thing, it wasn't 
it wasn't fake. You know, there was there was an interest that Arsenal were looking at Aaron Hickey, but it never materialised into them actually making an offer or following it through. So, yeah, you know, there, there's no smoke without fire. Clearly, there was something with Aaron Hickey, but obviously it wasn't as advanced or it wasn't as serious the level of interest as, as maybe some outlets were suggesting. As for this one, again, I'll go back to what I've said. I'd love this to happen. And I think that part of my excitement here and part of the reason why I wanted to jump on so quickly and do a stream is because this is one I'm desperate to see happen. Can I say it will, though? Not at this stage. I'm still I'm still wary of, of falling into that trap. I'm still reluctant of getting caught up in the emotion of it all. Uh, Sko says, our main issue last year was missed goal chances in crucial moments in games and inexperienced young players succumbing to pressure in the business end. They will be a year older, stronger for it. Plus, we have Jesus. Um, it, and that follows on from his comment. I should have read this one first. Can we please not lose our heads if we don't get this player, though, guys? He might be a target, but you can't win them all. Jesus, Vieira and Tiedemans or Zinchenko or whoever is still awesome. Yeah, and, and it goes back to the point I made a little bit earlier on. You, you've got to be really, really careful not to get too attached to targets that, you know, targets that may not end up being followed through, targets that you may not end up pursuing with the, the vigour that maybe was reported initially. Uh, Jid says, uh, doesn't he play on the right at Lazio? Where would he play at Arsenal? Yeah, he does, but that doesn't mean he couldn't play... Um, you know, it doesn't mean he couldn't play on the left of a midfield three at Arsenal. It also, you know, doesn't mean that, you know, maybe Martin Odegaard might move sides. I don't think he will because I like the fact that Odegaard drifts wide and cuts inside. But there's a lot of uh, flexibility in this team if we were able to get a player like Milinkovic Savic in. I know it's sometimes easier for the balance of things and, and the way you play out. And, you know, when you want to build a swift counter-attack, sometimes being able to open up onto your left foot when playing on the left side and continuing the move is helpful. But I don't think it's the be or an end all when you're a centre midfielder, which side you're on necessarily. Like, I don't think it's as important as when you're at centre-back, for example, where, you know, you're, you're under pressure and, you know, if you're being closed down, you can't afford to make a mistake. You're the last line of defence and that hesitance sometimes that comes from trying to shift the ball onto your stronger foot can land you in hot water. Obviously, there's pressure in midfield too, but I think it's a little bit different in that sense. Jay says he's the Serbian Pogba, super talented, hopefully uh, with a better attitude, though, I would say. Uh, what else have we got? Uh, Sheku says, sign uh, Milinkovic Savic and send Sambi on loan. Might not be the worst thing in the world for Sambi Lakonga's development, that's for sure. Um, Daniel says, is this why we haven't bid for Tielemans because of other links like Sergei Milinkovic Savic? Possibly. Again, I couldn't possibly confirm or deny that, but um, it does feel like Arsenal are working on a number of targets. There's no other explanation from them just seemingly leaving the Tielemans thing on ice um, and running the risk of somebody else coming in and making that offer and, and wrapping up that deal. Uh, Patrick Carlson says, I'd rather take Ruiz, but I see these players walking around on the pitch in Serie A. Can they really compete in the Premier League? Uh, this is where I think the difference is. I think Milinkovic Savage can. I think the way he moves across the ground, the physicality with which he can play, I think makes him a much better fit than Fabian Ruiz, who has got a little bit of the granite jackers about him. I've said that to you guys before, and I really do believe that. Great technically, um, great in terms of his football intelligence, but maybe just isn't mobile enough at all times. Uh, to do the job that maybe we'd be asking him to do if he came in. So that's where I'm at. Uh, what else have we got uh, in the chat box? Uh, a few non-Milinkovic Savage questions. We'll pick up some of these as well. Uh, Odra Deck says, Harry, is there any chance of Pepe staying at Arsenal? I think there's a big chance of Pepe staying at Arsenal if Arsenal don't get the kind of offer that appeals to them. Uh, this is a player that they outlaid a lot of money for. Um, I understand he's pushing for a move himself because he wants to play football, understandably so. Um, but I, it's, it's one of those things where Arsenal will be criticised if they don't move him on by certain sections of the fan base. But ultimately, to sell something, there has to be an interest. And at this moment in time, I don't know that there is. Uh, what else have we got? Big hello to Muzamil as well in the chat. Um Harry, will you be going to the Emirates Cup? I'm not 100% sure yet uh, is the honest answer to that. I was going to try and take um, a few days off before the start of the season just to, to kind of uh, recharge because it is a really long, long season. And 
towards the back end of, of last season where, you know, touch wood, I'm, I'm obviously grateful for it, but I was busier in terms of football work than I've ever been. I did find that towards the back end of the campaign, I suffered from a bit of burnout. I'm not going to lie. Like the content kept coming and, and the work kept coming, but in between, I felt really burnt out, really fatigued, really tired. And not that I wasn't enjoying it, but you do come to a point where you're just like, oh, come on, come on, like let's just be done with this. Let's let's get it out of the way. And 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 it was tough, you know. And um, and so I am considering just having a little bit of a break, which means I might not be around for the Emirates Cup just before the season starts. But um, that's not confirmed. So maybe I'll be there. I'll see. Um, I was thinking of taking my little boy. If I do go, I might take my little boy. Um, it might be his first Arsenal game. I don't know if he's still a bit too young, but we'll try it. Um, let's see. Anyway, okay. Uh, moving on. Uh, do, 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 do. Uh, Jay Sayer says, I can't believe these links because he could easily play for a better team than us. So could Gabriel Jesus, but we've done that. So I wouldn't uh, I wouldn't let that uh, put you off too much. But look, let's see. Let's see. Um, Crusader says, if this link is true, it will be massive. He is built like a tank. He absolutely is. Absolutely is. Um, what else have we got? Uh, Matt G says, uh, Harry, doesn't leaving Tielemans on ice risk another Thomas Lamar situation? We told him that we wanted him, then went in too late and he turned us down. Yeah, it does. Um, it does. But I don't think Arsenal would be taking that risk if they didn't have alternatives in mind. That's that's my opinion, my view. Well, I'd like to think that anyway. I'd like to uh, I'd like to hope uh, that that is the case. Um, but yeah, obviously there is a risk factor there for sure. Um, it's just it's just it's just dependent, isn't it, on what Arsenal see as the wider picture? You know, have they identified other players? Do they think that other players would be um, other players would? Uh, you know, be better options? Is there a chance of getting those options? What's the likelihood of getting those options? I think there's a lot to consider here. Uh, Naboya from uh, Serbia says, and sorry, my friend, if I've said your name wrong, he says, Milinkovic Savic is not good enough. Just a hyped player. I would go for Tielemans. Greetings from Serbia. Uh, <laughs> thanks for putting a downer on it, mate. But no, I think I think he's okay. I'd, I'd welcome him with uh, open arms uh, for sure. Uh, Kai Kai says, uh, God bless you, Harry. Love the podcast. I watch every day. The way you articulate yourself is top class. You teach me how to be the Arsenal fan that thinks logically. Keep up the great work, uh, bro. Come on, you gunners. Thank you so, so much, mate. Uh, really, really do appreciate your kind words. Uh, John Knight says, how good is he? Um, I think he's very good. Um, I, I really do. I, I think he's really, really good. I think he has so many... Uh, positives but I think also what is more important like you look at players all the time and you think he's good at this he's good at that he's he's great at this he's great at that he's maybe not so good at that I think it's easy to kind of draw conclusions around players but I think what I take encouragement from here is that the qualities that he has I just think would be a really good fit for the Premier League in particular and as for what he would bring to Arsenal system you've seen there you know not my own words but somebody else's that the high pressing thing is something that Milinkovic Savic can be very useful in, as well as the aerial threat, which is important in the Premier League. And I, I really do think that, as I say, there's there's more to be positive about than negative for sure. Has he at times looked a little bit disinterested at Lazio? Maybe, you know, I think that's a fair shout. But Lazio are, are, are not the Lazio of old. You know, Lazio are a side that, as I say, lost uh, Simone Inzaghi, of course. Um you know, to Inter, and, and he was very much keeping them sort of above where, where they probably should have been. You know, they, they finished fifth last season, um, six points outside of the Champions League places. There's a lot of work that needs to be done there, and he's been there a while. I just think he's got to the point where he's just, um, you know, he's just maybe a little bit, what's the word? He's maybe gone a little bit stale at Lazio. doesn't mean there's not a top player in there, though. I think we see it quite a bit. OK, um, I am going to leave it there, guys, because uh, I've got lots and lots of work to be getting on. We've already dropped two streams today. Um, don't know what later on is going to hold for us, so I'm not going to commit to anything. Um, but I am heading down to TalkSport Towers. Uh, you can catch me on TalkSport 2 from 4 till 6 p.m. I'm sure there'll be plenty of Arsenal chat on there. I'm sure there'll be plenty of Ronaldo chat. 
Salah chat. Lots and lots of things happened over the weekend. Christian Eriksen uh, supposedly on his way to Manchester United as well. So there's lots and lots for us to discuss on that show. Come join me. TalkSport 2, 4 till 6 p.m. today. I'm heading down there now. Um, so, yeah, but it would be rude of me to, to disappear without taking a super chat from Tom. Tom, thank you so much. You got it in just in time. I was about to head, hit the end broadcast button. Uh, he says, I woke up this morning thinking about a back three. Do you think there's any chance maybe a way to the big three? I don't think that will be our go-to. I, I, I think we've seen enough from Mikel Arteta to suggest that his preferred formation is more like a 4-3-3. But I do think that it's a good option to have. And I think it's an option that we need to have in order sometimes to just narrow that gap between ourselves and some of the stronger sides. So I'd like to have that option. And I think that particularly if he signs Lissandro Martinez, but also with with um, Takahiro Tomiyasu as well, who can play centre-back and full-back, I think we'll be able to do that. We'd have that availability available to us. Um, which is certainly useful to have in the armory. So, yeah, um, it is a possibility, but I still don't think it would be the go-to, if I'm honest. But a big thank you, um, Tom, for your very, very kind donation to the channel. Look, I'm going to disappear before people uh, drop in any more Super Chats. I'll catch you all a little bit later on. Uh, until next time, take care of yourselves and come on, you Gunners. I'm Martin Tyler, and you're listening to Harry Simeon. 